Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to the Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And man, today uh, we have another exciting guest. And, and this is going to be our first student athlete actually on, uh, on the platform. And, and, I, and I feel that, that he would be the only one to do us justice by being the first student athlete. Uh, man, this is my brother. I, I, I connected with him a little while ago. He's, you know, he, he's, a, he's a student athlete at the University of Arkansas, Woo Pig. You know what I'm saying? Sure, yeah, uh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, so with with, with so so without without further ado, and 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 Q, I know you have a lot of accolades. I know you have a lot of accomplishments. I know you won a lot of awards. So I'm not even going to try to say the ones that you won. We can talk about it a little bit, man. But I, I want to int- introduce none other than the Quan Nan. Welcome, brother. How you doing, man? I'm blessed. No small way, bro. JJ, what's good? How you been? How you doing? Man, I'm good, man. I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm I'm being safe. Club quarantining it up at the house. So, you know, every everything's good on this side, man. Everything's good on this side. How about you? I'm good, man. I just been just been chilling, man. I just graduated, you know, finally. Uh so I just been trying to get back up on uh training and stuff like that. And just just been chilling, bro. You know, just educating myself in this process, learning, learning new things. Definitely, definitely, man. So cute. So the, the the first thing I I realized about you, man, was was you had a you had a heavy accent, man. So where 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 are you from, Q? Talk to the people. <laughs> I'm from the Bahamas, bro. I'm from Nassau, Bahamas. My my accent come and go, you know. Uh, I I kind of try to talk the way people can understand me, so people can understand me. Because if I talk in my accent, they won't really understand what I'm saying because it's so deep. But I'm from the tropics, bro. Two four two. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, so you being from the Bahamas, what brought you to the States? What made you want to come to the States? Rewind this back, Q. R- 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 take it back. R- 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 rewind it back, man. And, and, and let us know, let us in in your world. Cause the Bahamas is beautiful, man. So yeah, what man. made you want to cross and, you know, come to this side? Uh, so, I mean, like growing up, my, my focus was to never, never go to college or never really go to America. You know, I, I just, hear people talking about foreign, you know, mm. like everybody would talk about uh, uh, Miami, you, you know what I'm saying? Everybody would talk about Miami or Florida. And, but uh, I used to hoop back in the days, you know what I'm saying? I used to, I used to play basketball. And so it wasn't really something that I wanted to pursue going to America. You know, I just was doing it because that's the only thing, you know, to do, you know, growing up in the Bahamas. So uh, this one time, you know, uh, this coach, Mr. James Roll, he came, he came on my grandma's porch and was like, you know, do you, do you want to try to do track? And I was, he said, he said, do you want to try to do track? I was like, track? You know what I'm saying? Like, the only thing I know about track is the Olympics, you know, because a few of my cousins ran for the Bahamas in the Olympics. But other than that, I was like, track? He was like, man, I could get you to jump over seven feet in one year. I was like, you crazy, bro. I'm like, no, no way. You know, yeah. So, you know, I, you know, I prayed about it. Obviously, I, you know, I'm a big believer in Jesus Christ. Uh, I prayed about it, and you know, I felt something, you know, come over my body, and you know, and I felt like this is for you, you know, go try this. And uh, actually, I, I tried it, you know, that summer of 2012, and I like it just clicked, bro. You know, in 2013, I won my first medal for the Bahamas, bro, as a junior, and then. Uh, <clears throat> the University of Arkansas contacted me and stuff like that. So more schools, and I'm like, colleges? And I'm like, I'm freaking out, you know? So uh, after that, that that was it, man. You know, I I go to school for free. Uh, so that that's how my journey started, man. You know, uh, just oh, one, one decision I made, bro, yeah. to, <clears throat> to leave something that I thought was good for me. Mm. You know? Uh, some pe- people are, people don't really understand what you think is good for you. It, it, it's not really the thing that God has for you. Understand what I'm saying? So not not every good thing is a God thing. You know what I'm saying? If I never stopped playing basketball, we probably would have never been on this call. You know? 
And, and th that's just how God works, bro. You know, we think that what, you know, what we think is good for us is actually not good for us, you know, because we, we don't see the things that God see. You know what I'm saying? So God saw that this meeting was, you know, this, this Zoom call, this podcast was in, you know, it was in route from I was in the Bahamas in 2012, not knowing anything about track and field. I, I don't believe that I would have, you know, been connected with you had not stopped playing basketball. Mm. And then have you always been this strong, like in, in your faith? Like when, like when did that come about? Because, because I know, I, like I know we talked offline, but like when, when did you get this strong in, in, in your faith? Uh, well, I, I mean, to be honest, I never grew up in the church home. You know, I never, <clears throat> excuse me, grew up going to church and stuff like that. But I knew there was a God, you know, and uh, when I, when I, when I look back, you know, when I look back on my life, I know that even though I didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, he was always there, you know, because we could, we could, we could not see Jesus when Jesus is standing in our face, you know, when he want to give us an opportunity to do the right things. And so like, I think I, I got really strong in my faith like two years ago, a year and a half, or, you know, yeah, two years ago, a year and a half. And, you know, I look back at some of the things, like some of the injuries I had, I knew only God could have bring me through things like that. You know what I'm saying? So just the opportunity, even me being from the Bahamas, I just became the second person in my family to, you know, graduated college, you know, uh, my, my older brother, Tum Tum Man was the first. And so, I mean, it's just a big, it's a big deal. And we know that, you know, you know, we give all credit, you know, and all glory to God because we know, you know, just being in that environment, man, like that's a generation of, you know, those are generation of curses. You know, I mean, we graduated from two of the biggest universities in America, Michigan, uh, Michigan State University and the University of Arkansas. So, I mean, only God could do something like that. It had nothing to do with what man did. So we don't take no credit for it, though. And that's, I think that's what has been keeping, keeping uh, just me uh, personally, because my brother, had, you know, wrote me one day and said, hey, bro, like, he sent me a picture. He said, I just, I was looking at this picture and it made me cry, you know, and he said, uh, trapped inside of that little boy was who you are right now and nobody believed in you you know he said you had you have you have you have, you have a spirit of never giving up regardless of what people said of, say about you you know and one of my other brothers in Christ you know he he was just talking to me one day and he said bro he said because you've been humbled your whole life through your trials you know God is about to exalt you because he know you will give him the glory and that's what I'm all about bro because I know bro being from that environment, you know, you know what I'm saying? Being from that environment in the Bahamas, you know, like nobody really make it out of that, bro. You know, and I thank God for his grace, you know, because I'm not no, I'm no different from the kids back, who, you know, who I grew up with, you know, I just made different decisions and different choices because I had an older brother who no, he couldn't mess up because he had somebody following him. And that's, that's the thing about life, bro. Uh, when you have, when, when, when you know somebody is following you, you want to do the right things. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. You understand what I'm saying? It's the, it's the person behind you. So my, my, my brother actually told me one day, he was like, uh, you know, he was telling his friends how he was the first in the family to go to college. And he said, the Holy Spirit told him to say, don't be the last, you know, mm -hmm. being first, you know, right. being first is cool, you know, but don't be the last. And, you know, yeah. And I was just telling some the other day, you know, about, you know, the pressure of being second. You know what I'm saying? And people don't understand how much pressure it is to be second, bro, JJ, bro. And what I mean by that, I mean, like, first is good. You understand what I'm saying? But the pressure comes, the, the pressure that is on the person who is trying to do what that person did is harder, bro. Mm. It's, it's really harder because you have all these people telling you, you can't do what he did. You understand what I'm saying? It can't be done. That was impossible. He just made it, you know, through thick and thin. He just made it on a slim thread. But now you trying to do the same thing he did. But, you know, by the grace of God, I did it, bro. And I don't want to be the last either. You know, so, you know, I want to inspire, you know, even kids in America, but who, you know, came from environments that, you know, people don't really believe in them or environments that, you know, people looked at and say, oh, there's nothing good. There's nothing good is going to come out of this environment. You see, you know, you know what they say about Jesus, man. You know what I'm saying, man? And we we, we going to get into that later if you want to let, you know, get into that. But, you know, just stuff like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? I want to inspire a lot of kids, you know, in the Bahamas too. Uh, just don't have no hope, bro. You know, and, you know, to really show them that, you know, once you hope, once your hope is in Christ Jesus, everything will be fine. 
I'm not saying it would be easy, but everything would be fine. He has a yoke too, but his yoke isn't as heavy as our yoke, but it's still a yoke. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I mean, that, I mean, I think you said something really, like, really powerful there because, he, like, hearing you talk about the pressure of being second. Like, I heard, my, I heard Michael Jordan. You know, the Last Dance been going on the documentary yeah. series, but I, I heard Michael Jordan before say this to somebody who came up to him after they won their first championship. He said, he said, you can be lucky and win one. Right. He said, go do it again. Because cause you you know like I know when it comes down to sports and when it comes down to life, after after you're the person who's on top, then the next year and you're going back to do the same thing. Right. The term my coach used to say is you have an X on your back. Yeah, because yeah. everybody wants to take you off. And then even like you were saying, like people will be saying, Oh, well, nah, Q, you're not gonna do that. You know, your brother did that because you know he's smarter than you. Or yeah. your brother did that because he's better than or, or whatever people say. So what, so what would you say to somebody who might be facing, like, that level of adversity? Um, you know, like, maybe somebody, if, if, if it's somebody coming back after, you know, after this season or somebody coming back and, you know, they're, they're having to follow somebody who is just, like, a dominant force. What would you say to that person? I would just say, you know, just, just trust, really just trust your coach, trust your training, you know what I'm saying? And most importantly, just, you know, uh, trust God, man, because success is dimensional. You understand what I'm saying? God know who was the national champion before the national champion become that. You understand what I'm saying? So once you in, I always tell people, if you walk in with God and you in his timing, you on, on God's timing, you won't miss anything that you're supposed to get. You understand what I'm saying? You won't miss anything. I just, just you know, trust your coaches, you know, trust your training, you know, uh, be, have character, man. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, this one time I walked in, walked in my coach's office and I was like, coach, you know, uh, stop recruiting talented kids. He looked at me. He looked at me. He looked at me like, what do you mean stop recruiting talented kids? I said, because half of the talented kids don't have no character. Oh, God. I said, half of the talented kids don't have no character. When Listen to me. Yo, 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 talent will take you where only your character can keep you, bro. So half of these talented kids, they come in, they – you know, they come in and say, oh, uh, I was Gatorade, you know, track athlete of the year in high school. But, I mean, when you come to college, bro, it's a dog. It's a dog. It, it's, listen to me. It's hard, bro. It's hard. So you have that, you know, you have to have some character because you're going to have some injuries, bro. Those are character building moments, bro. Those injuries aren't there to hurt you, bro. They, they there to, you know, where your trust, who you're trusting. You understand what I'm saying? Are you going to endure? Because... A lot of people don't realize that God don't care about your pain. He care about your endurance. Your endurance is important to God. That's good. Your pain, the, see? Pain is temporary, bro. Your endurance is important there. And once you endure that, bro, everything will be fine. You know what I'm saying? So trust your coach. Trust your training. You know, and, you know, just be, you know, just don't look at other people's success. Don't look at it. Don't watch it. You understand what I'm saying? Because not everybody's success is from God. And I'm going to leave that just like that. How you, so how, so how you operate with like how, what level of standard do you set when it when it comes to character because you're talking about character and and I pair character with integrity but but how, how how do you how do you carry yourself to where you consider yourself to be like uh or or, or to because I view you as a, as a guy who operates with, with a high level of character so so talk talk a little bit about that because somebody might, might be out there and you know they might be thinking they're doing the right stuff. They might think they're doing things the right way. But but what what is that, what does that really look like? Uh, I would say character. I mean, uh, when I first got to the University of Arkansas, bro, I, I had already experienced a, a lot of injuries. You know what I'm saying? I had already experienced a lot of injuries. And, you know, you we we as human beings, bro, we kind of let our circumstance control our circumstances control how we operate in life. You mm. know what I'm saying? We we let that we let that control everything about us. So when I, when I'm talking about character, I mean you don't change where the, I, I'm in last place or I'm in first place. I'm still gonna keep my head up. You know what I'm saying? When I, bro, I took losses, bro, like last year, bro, last season. I remember at the regional meet, bro, the West Regional Meet, NCAA, the, the prelims. I came I came 58, bro. Now I'm number five in the country. I'm not boasting, I ain't bragging, but I was, I was, you know, I was comfortable in that position because I know it wasn't going to be like that the next year. Mm. I knew it. Nobody else knew it, bro, but I knew it 
because I know there was something I had to change about me. I had to trust my trainers more. I had to trust my, my coaches more. You understand what I'm saying? I had to watch what I drink and watch what I eat. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't never drank as much water as I did. And, pl- and, and the most important thing, bro, and I'm, be- I'm just being real. You, got, you have to feed your spirit, man. You got to stay in your word. What you, what you put into God, bro, is what you're going to get out of him. Hmm. What you put into God is what you're going to get out. If you're not feeding your spirit, man, bro, it, it, when them injuries come, you're going to blame God. Not knowing that God, see, it, it's not about what you feel, bro. It's about what you know. It's about what God said. If you're walking in this time and, and God say, Q, or God say, JJ, you're going to be the national champion. Regardless if you get hurt be- the day of the, mat- the national meet or the day before, believe in what God said to you. Because we get caught up in what man said and what God said. We get caught up in what we see and what we saw. You understand what I'm saying? So it, people, don't, people gotta realize this. If what you see is not what you saw, then you need to use what you saw to change how you see it. Mm. Use what you saw, you, you understand? And, 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 okay, my, okay. I'm gonna, give you a, I'm gonna give you a quick story at uh, the SEC champion. Bro, I was gonna win this, bro. I'm so serious. I was going to win the long jump and the triple jump at the SEC meet, but it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't how I would win. You understand what I'm saying? It wasn't how I was supposed to be. So uh, the day that day, I never do approaches before a track meet, my coach was like, "Hey, let's go there and do some approaches. Let's feel it." Right. And I'm like, "You know what? It's a big meet. I'm not going to argue with my coach. Or, you know, I don't want no disagreements. I'm going to listen to him. He's my coach. He's an authority. I respect him. You understand what I'm saying? I'm gonna do what he say. So I went out. On my first approach, I felt a little tweak in my hip. I was like, oh, man, I was ready. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when I went back to the, you know, to the hotel, I'm, you know, feeling a little pain. I woke up the next morning feeling a little pain. Can't really, you know, flex my, my, my legs like I normally do. I can't really push and run. So, I'm like, man, don't tell me this is happening. Don't tell me this is really happening at an, uh, you know, at an SEC championship meet when my teammates need me. I'm the only jumper for the University of, of Arkansas. Oh, and these no. girls, I'm like, man, this is crazy. Holy Spirit told me, say, say, Q, don't focus on what you feel. Focus on what you know. Focus on what you know. On my third jump, bro, on my third jump, I ran to that boy, bro, with no pain in my body. 26-4. I said, wow. Came out of the pit. I said, Abba. Abba means father. I said, wow. I said, that's a moment that I would never forget. You know what I'm saying? That's a moment I would never forget, bro. And that's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean. Like, that's what character is all about, bro. Never changing regardless of your circumstance or your, your situation. You know what I'm saying? Being, being, uh, having, being, just, God is a God of integrity, bro. Regardless of what you do, He's never going to stop loving you. Mm. He's never going to stop loving you. That's what I mean. Like, being the same, man, I mean, like, you know, if I, I was in a place, you know, two years ago when I first got to Arkansas, like, you know, I, I wasn't, a, I didn't have no character, bro. That's how I got to tell my coach that I'm a very talented uh, guy. You know, you know what I'm saying? But I don't rely on my talent, bro. I rely on my character because I know if you just talented, bro, and you didn't have no character, when you get to the, you're going to fall fast. Like I said, your talent, your character is going to keep you where your talent takes you, bro. That's, that's my take on what, what, what character is. It'll never change it, but regardless of your situation, regardless of what you go, I didn't tell my ACL, my MCL, my LCL. I came back, came back in six months. I was good. PR. Because I, I wasn't, war- listen, it was hard. It wasn't easy at all, bro. I had doubt. I had doubt. But I didn't believe that, that. That happened at different times? That had to happen at different times. My ACL, my, that same time, bro. Came back in six months, bro. I can't make this up. Only by the grace of God, bro. I still don't know how I did it. That's how I know, bro. I look back on these things, bro, and say God was there. ACL and MCL in six months. You came back and rehabbed that after six in six months. ACL, MCL, and LCL. I can't make this up. I'm so serious. 
Yeah, bro. And that's crazy. Because I know I know typically with a with a, a ACL by yourself, that's a season. Yeah, and guess what, bro? Like that happened in warm-up at my first track meet. So all of that, bro, character, bro, all of that was, was building my character. Bro, if, when, I first, when I first came to college, if I was the best right away, or if I was up there, I wouldn't have never last. I wouldn't have been cocky. I would, no humility. I, I mean, would have I I mean, think I was the man. man and, I, and I mean, I know that's easy. Like, it's, 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 especially how you're talking about people coming in from high school. Uh, are, are people transferring? Because, you know, everybody transferring now with the whole transfer portal and stuff. Yeah. But now people, if almost like if they're not the best right out, it's like I'm not in the right situation. It's like, nah, bro, you might be in the right situation, but, but you still got to work. Yeah. Like, if, if you want to be the best, the God-given talent is cool. But you still have to, you still got to do your reps. You still got to do your workouts. You still got to drink your water. You still got to eat right. There's a lot of stuff. I'm, and I'm, I'm starting to realize this now more than ever before. But there's a lot of stuff that it goes into being not just a, a, a peak athlete, but, but being a, a high performance, a high performing individual. Bro, you got you, you to gotta do more than, than just wake up in the morning early and say, hey, I'm here. I'm ready for the day. Let's get it, baby. Let's go. I don't think people know how hard it is, bro. Bro, it's hard. I, bro, people don't realize how hard it is to be disciplined, especially at a university, bro. Mm. Like, for, like for me, I'm from the Bahamas. I don't see, I ain't so, I ain't seen none of this back home, bro. So it's kind of harder for me, bro, because I, I never grew up in this situation. You know what I'm saying? Some people, when they come here, they, you know, they lose focus. You know, they lose track of who they really are. You know what they stand for. They forget that you know God could have kept you in that situation that He brought you out of. You understand what I'm saying? He could have kept you in there, but He know He know that. Look, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to glorify me. I'm gonna give you the opportunity. If you don't do it, I'm gonna give. Hey, if you don't do it, I'm. Gonna, ain't gonna put you back in the situation, but you're gonna be on your own. You're gonna have to figure some things out. You're gonna have to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Give me another chance. And He's He's always gonna give you another chance, bro. Because he's your father. He's your heavenly father. He's never going to forsake you. Never going to leave you, regardless of what you do here. What you, you know, how much you disobey him. But there's consequences, bro. There's, there's, yeah, and, and I mean, the, the, the crazy thing about it, too, is that there's, there's consequences for everything. Every single decision. For everything. Consequences could be good. Consequences could be bad. But the way you just said that, though, I never even thought about that, though. Being disciplined at a universe. Q, when I was in college, bruh. No, like I was, I was not disciplined. All right, yeah, so, hard, bro. <laughs> man, man, because I was so it was it so it was me and my me and my boy Boozo, my best friend. He was he was a groomsman in my wedding. Man, we we went to the club. The only discipline we had, we was going to the club every Thursday. So every Thursday we go into the club, get back home at two two thirty, mm. Bruh, We had practice at six o'clock in the morning. We that year we won a national championship. Wow! It was I mean it would I wouldn't recommend it because we had a really talented group of guys on that team and we knew when to turn it on and and certain guys just knew that you know we can't be doing certain stuff. But bro, discipline discipline is a different beast. Discipline and and this is this is why Q. This is why everybody says what they want. Right beginning of the year. I want this, I'm gonna achieve this, I wanna get a six pack. Like everybody say it, they put it on the vision board, it sound great, it sound wonderful. And the craziest thing is, we know what it takes to get it. Right. We're we're afraid of the work. Hey, people just people they, they don't really want it, bro. They, they don't yeah, your endurance is important. It's best, bro, your endurance is important in anything you do, bro. Anything. Your endurance is important, bro. You, if you don't have endurance, I remember last year. So, so last year, we got a new coach here at the University of Arkansas, you know, uh, and he would give me these workouts, and I couldn't really finish it like that. Bro. You know, I would feel all type of lat lactic acid and stuff like that. And, you know, it was because I wasn't disciplined. I wasn't taking care of my body. I wasn't drinking water, you know what I'm saying? 
Uh, I wasn't eating right. I was eating all type of junk food and stuff like that. I was at 177 pounds, you know? So, I, you know, I, I took it upon myself. I was like, you know what? If I want to go pro, I got to act a fool, even though I'm not in that pro mm-hmm. arena yet, you know? I said, I got to act like myself. So I started to eat a set breakfast, bro. I ate oatmeal and a glass of milk every morning with three scrambled eggs. Every morning in the summer, every morning. You know what I'm saying? That was my breakfast. Every morning, bro. And then I, you know, kind of ate steak and shrimp and stuff like that with mixed vegetables and stuff like that for dinner and stuff like that. Now we eat a sandwich for lunch with fruits in the summer. Boom. I would work out. I would hoop. I would do cardio. I would hoop. I would do cardio. I would, you know, do a lot of push-ups, a lot of core work. When I went, we, we take this board, this board part uh, test for body fat and stuff like that, and muscle mass. Okay. When we did it the first time, I had 7.8, right? So we started training now. We started training. Like, I'm working out. I'm drinking water. Like, I'm only drinking water. I'm doing the, the, the right thing, you know, taking bat, ice baths and, you know, uh, just scratching at home and stuff like that, taking it upon myself to focus on me, to, you know, to take care of my body. Yeah. I'm not I'm not worried about what, you know, the trainers got going on because I'm not going to see them if I don't need to see them. Mm. I'm going to take care of my body. I'm going to get mine. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Once you start taking care of your body, you don't need to go see nobody like that. So I started taking care of my body. Started training, doing these workouts. He gave me, he gave me the same workout, but instead of me doing six, I told him, give me eight. I said, give me eight, coach. Man, I'm after after eight one fifties, eight two hundreds in what twenty eight seconds, twenty seven seconds in the one fifty, sixteen seconds. I'm walking off the track with no feeling, no pain. I'm just walking because I took care of my body, endurance, bro. When I went back to take the uh, the the body fat, t- I had four point one body fat, bro, and I lost seventeen pounds. So I was training at one sixty, bro, and I was jumping at one sixty four. Cause I took care of my body. That's what discipline is, bro. Discipline ain't about being at the track and doing what you gotta do. It's about what you do at home. It's about what you do. How long you sitting down, bro? Are you gonna sit on the game 24 seven? Are you gonna sit on the game 24 seven? You know what I'm saying? Are you gonna just look and scroll on the internet and do these things? Wait, feed your spirit, bro. Get your Bible, even if you, you put on your headphones, and you turn on that Bible app and you listen to it. Faith comes from hearing the word of God, bro. That's important. That's I, I tell. I'm being real. That's the most. That, that was the most. That was the most important thing. That that was the thing that really helped me with my success this year. The word. If, if it wasn't for the word, I wouldn't have been able to train like the way I was training. If it wasn't for the word, I wouldn't have the integrity. If it wasn't for the word, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, endure the race and then daughter practice and stuff like that. The word is everything, bro. Everything you need to maneuver in life to make it to your destination. The word is the blueprint to everything. The word of God, bro. The Bible is education, you know, you know what I'm saying? So when it, in terms of like, you know, in terms of like, uh, being able to endure things, bro, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like you might feel weak. You want to sound what I'm saying at a practice. But what the word of God say with weakness? You know what I'm saying? God, you were strong. You know, when, when you weak, he's strong. You understand what I'm saying? And, and I always tell people, you don't have to be 100% to give 100%. You could be 60% and God could be that 40, and that's 100. You could be 40, he could be that 60, and that's 100. God is a God. God is a, he, he, he take care of his own, bro. He only want your effort, you know, bro. He honors your effort, bro. And that 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 right there was one of the biggest things for me this year, bro. You know, in terms of like training, the word, bro. The word, bro. The word is so powerful, bro. I mean, it, I mean, it really is. It, it, it really is. And 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 that's one thing I always go back and forth with my wife. Like we we talk and we have conversations because it doesn't matter how how often you read the Bible, but there are different times. Like like you're in one phase of your life. I'm in a phase of my life, and there might be something that you see right now and I read the same verse and I don't see it the same way as you because it might apply differently. And that's why I know they call it the living and breathing word because 
it like it, it as as crazy as it's gonna sound, but it be moving. Like it, it really, it really does because it evolves. The words don't change. The words don't change because it is it is the living word. It's perfect. But but the application changes because we're in different stages of life, different phases, you know, different challenges, whatever that might look like. Right. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Q, I, I I didn't even ask you. So what so what 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 is your event? Like oh, uh, I'm a long and triple jump. So you do long and triple. Long and triple jump. Yep. Long and triple jump. I used to be a high jumper, bro. I never used to do none of none of those events. Actually, when I first started track, uh, you know, you know, I'm a hooper, so I could jump. You know, uh, we have this, you know, host board and stuff like that, and I jump six one. You know, I, six one. You know what I'm saying? The coach came and told me, "Yeah, I'm gonna get you to jump over seven feet." I'm like, "Bro, I don't even know what track is about." <laughs> that next year, bro, that summer, that summer I went in the training jumping six one. I jumped seven one and three quarters the next year. I can't make this up. <laughs> Seven, one, and three quarters, bro. At the age of sixteen. Is but is what is six one even bad? Is six one like average? What is what like? Where does that rank? Six one. Where would that rank at that time? Uh, at that time, uh, it was all right for my age, but then when I jump over seven feet, I, I went the world. I went the world youth that year in Donish Ukraine. I came fifth, bro. Fifth in the world as a youth. It it was pretty dope, bro. And that's how I knew I was like, man, I ain't never went nowhere for uh for basketball and I'm traveling the world. I'm an ambassador for the Bahamas, you know, uh, traveling the world for the Bahamas, you know, uh, winning medals and stuff like that. I was like, man, track, track is about to be solid. And I never, I mean, I still hoop up to this day. I still go and play pickup basketball. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk trash all day. All day I'm gonna talk trash, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful I stopped playing basketball, bro. Because the relationships I, uh, I've made, you know, in track and field and, you know, uh, just being able to come to this university, bro. Like, when I came here, there was a lot of guys here with me. All of them left. I was the only one stay, that stayed. And that's what I'm talking about, character. You understand? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not because I'm not jumping far. My first two years, yeah, I'm going to just leave and try. think it's going to work. Sometimes you got to stay in your mess because God could bless you in your mess. He could bless you in your mess and you wouldn't even know it. Just like David. Like we had that conversation, yeah. you know. What I mean? He could bless you in your mess, bro. You think it's, it would look messy to God? I mean, to you, it's not messy. It's perfect. It's perfect. Hmm. Dang. So you, so you came in and everybody else left. <laughs> That's wild, man. So, That's how do, bro. so Q, what happens next, man? After, so a, after, a, I mean, after you finish up at, at the University of Arkansas, what, what happens next, man? I want to go pro, bro. I want to go pro. I want to uh, pursue my professional career uh, in track and field. Uh, I know it's possible. You, you know what I'm saying? I know uh, God has a plan, whatever that may be. I'm not I'm not really a big planner bro, because I never planned to come to the United States. You know, I never asked God for none of this. When I was growing up, me and Tom always used to talk about how we going to make it out the hood, you know, how we going to get a good situation. It was never about universities. It was never about, I want to be this, I want to be that. It was all about Bro, how are we gonna make it out of this environment? You know, what could we do? And we didn't really have no plans, bro. You know, I never said I want to go to college and get a degree. You know, I went to school for free my whole entire life, bro. I never had to pay a dime, and I thank God. And that's how I know it's God. You understand what I'm saying? Because my parents don't have the funds to send me and my brother to college. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I know, man. God set this right up. He set this up the right way. I might not. I, I might have not always been on the right path. But it was the right thing for me. You understand what I'm saying? I might have fall. I might have fall, right? But it's not. People think when you fall, you understand what I'm saying? It's a bad thing. You know, you know what you learn on the way down helps you get back up. You understand what I'm saying? It's what you learn on your way down that helps you get back up and stay like still on the right path. So like with injuries, when I first came to Arkansas, I've been getting a lot of injuries, bro. And I started to complain. And I was like, you know what, bro? Maybe it's not about the injuries. God is teaching me something. Mm. He is teaching me that don't worry about what you feel, you know, focus on what you know. And, you know, I think, you know, just, bro, just, I'm a, I'm a very talented guy, but I don't rely on my talent. Bro. I, true story. Can't make this up. I'm so serious. 
my first track meet this season, we was at Texas Tech. And before I got on the run meter jump, I was the next jump up. I bent down and I was like, holy spirit, take away my talent, my ability, and jump for me. I won on my first jump and I stopped. I can't make this up, but you could ask anybody. First jump, I won, I won off my first jump and I stopped. Oh, I said, I said, insane. take away my talent and my ability. I want you to jump for me. Can he jump? Yeah. It wasn't me jumping this season, bro. It was the Holy Spirit, bro. I'm so serious, bro. Bro, the diff the difference between me last year, and pra even my teammates was like freaked out, bro, on how far I was jumping in practice. Even my coaches was like, even like everything about my training was so good. They was freaking right out. It was like I was a to totally different guy. Holy Spirit, bro, master teacher. I you know, tried to get down the pit one time too, man. The pit ain't nothing to play with, man. Yeah, I mean, you you jumping in there. Wow. It's fun, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, I've been watching. I, I watched your video on Instagram. I've seen the video. Yeah. I've seen the video. Yeah, bro, but uh, that that's – I want to go pro, bro, man. You know, whatever whatever God has in store for me, bro, whether it be, you know, uh, I, I love to talk to people, bro. You know, I love having, you know, real conversations. You know, uh, I, I want to speak. You understand what I'm saying? I do believe that people are going to send for me to speak to them and stuff like that. People are going to pay me to speak to them. That's what I believe. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, when you, Dr. Miles Monroe, he said, this guy, Dr. Miles Monroe, he said, when you become a solution to a problem, people are going to send for you. I mean, he he, he was a he was a, a behemoth. He passed away. God bless his soul. Oh, he was he was from the he was from yeah, Bahamas. Yeah. Uh, his his church was actually like five corners away from my my house, and I never went. Oh, I didn't even know about him until my first year at Arkansas. I'm so serious. Oh, wow. He made five thousand dollars an hour because he became a solution to a problem. Yeah. A lot. Of, don't get me wrong, bro. Athletes are great. A lot of athletes are not like me. Not every athlete is the same. That's true. There's no, there's no, there's no other person like Laquan Man. You understand what I'm saying? There's yeah. no other person like you, bro. There's, your, there's, not, there's not another person like me. I know. <laughs> Think about it, bro. You were so important that God placed you. He placed you. He placed you. He, like, see, he did it you in your mother's womb, bro. That's how important you was to to him. You know how important you are to the world, bro. What you do? You ain't seen nothing yet, bro. You think you think this popping off, bro? You ain't seen nothing yet. God is about to take you to another dimension, bro. Another dimension, but you don't even know what that next dimension look. Only God does. And what God see? The Bible says, "Marvelous your thoughts of me, O Lord." That if I will count the number of sign on the seashore, I won't add up. Think about the thoughts that 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 God have about you, bro. Think that's what I think about all the time. I, you know, when I pray, I say, you know. I'm above whatever the word of God say I am. That's what I say. So if somebody tell me I'm ugly, God, where's that in the word? The Bible says I was fair, fairfully and wonderfully made. That was it. You know what I'm saying? I was created in secret. So how do you know? Only, only the living God knows, bro. That's how I, that's how I maneuver, bro. That's how I maneuver. Is, that's how it is, bro. Man, as 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 you should, as you should, man. But man, with Q, I, I, I definitely enjoyed it, enjoyed us chopping it up today. I want I want to do this. I want to do this other part, man. We we always have a little fun on the show. Yeah. Like like, like I told you before, so this is called the because this is the Beyond the Ball podcast. So yeah. uh, so so we do something called the two minute drill. Okay. So this is just I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you with some rapid fire questions, and you just gonna just shoot it off. So yeah, I say the question rapid fire, so you answer rapid fire. You can't be taking all day because yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> so we not we not gonna go there, yeah. but uh, so I'm, I'm gonna hit you with two minute drill, and then we are gonna go ahead and get out of there. Are you ready, Q? I'm ready. And here we go. Favorite food? Chinese. What what like what dish? Uh, <laughs> sweet and sour chicken. And okay. Chicken. Okay, good, good. Book you're currently reading? Uh, uh Waiting and Dating by Dr. Miles Monroe. Oh, nice. Ne ne uh, your, your your Netflix quarantine show of preference? Luke Cage. Oh, okay. All-time favorite movie? Uh, Love and Basketball. 
Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, 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 your favorite quote. If you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Oh, uh, don't go to the ET classic. Okay. And then and then one tip you want to leave with us for a student athlete. Uh tip I want to leave is uh don't worry about, you know, uh, your circumstances. Don't let your circumstances uh change who you are. Uh let who you are change your circumstances. Boom. Oh, there it is. There it is. And then Q, where, where can where can people uh find you? How can they follow you and, and stay connected? Uh, I, I just re- recently uh, made an Instagram, so y'all can follow me at Laquan underscore man on Instagram. Or you can just type in Laquan man on Instagram. L-A-Q-U-A-N-N-A-I-R-N. Instagram. That's, that's my only social media platform right now. Yeah. So, I, might, I might get on Twitter. I, I might. So I can start, you know, uh, shoot, 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 know my Q-tip. I'm going to read my Q-tip for the day. I'm going I'm to I'm set it out right here. It's... Uh, my Q-tip is stop letting the, the the element of love blind you to the intentions of people. All right. So the Q-tip of the day is stop letting the element of love blind you to the intentions of people. Uh, uh, okay. A guy would say he love a girl, right? He ain't really love that girl. He just trying to get he just trying to get with her to get what he want. Or somebody could say, oh, bro, I love you, bro. You want to sound like saying I'm walking with you? But he only walking with you because he know where you are going. So, you know, we let love blind us to the intentions of other people and what other people really want from us. So that's my Q-tip of the day. I, po- I post one, you know, here and there every every day. So catch me on Instagram, you know, if y'all want to chop it up with me, get to know me more, you know, I'll be right there. Dude, it sounds like you need to go ahead and get a Twitter because a Q-tip every day is basically a tweet, man. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to push you. I'm not going to. <laughs> but uh but yeah well q man definitely appreciate you taking the time to to hop on man and uh I- excited to watch your journey this year and, and excited to see you know what happens after all this is lifted uh but man everybody else out there be sure to follow q and also be sure to follow beyond the ball on instagram you can type in go beyond the ball and then make sure to leave a review on the podcast share it with the fellow teammate share it with a fellow friend Uh, But help us get the message out, help us get the word out so we can impact more lives and uh, serve and support more student athletes. So we'll see you next week, Ballers. I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball.